Our topic of the day is introductions to firewall. This is the forward. During data communications, insecure factors may cause information leakage, incomplete information, unavailable information, and etc. Therefore, firewall are required during network deployment. This course introduces the history, features, typical networking modes, application scenario, and technical specifications of Huawei Firewall. The objective of this topic is that when we finish this topic, firstly, we will be able to understand the basic concept of firewall. Next, we are going to see as well the firewall security policy, followed by a list of uh, command for the uh, security policy configuration. This topic is break into four parts. We have firewall overview, principle of firewall folding, firewall security policy and applications, and finally, ASPF, application specific packet filtering. Firstly, we are going to see the firewall features. We have several firewall features as follow. We have logical area filter, hiding the intranet structures, security assurance, and proactive defense against attack. All these features over here are basically some basics firewall should have. Firstly, let's talk about the logical area filter. What you can see over here is that over here we have our firewall. This firewall is placed between the public network as well as the private networks. Our private networks is our internal network. Usually, it is our trustworthy domains, whereby the public network is the one that is not trustworthy. So, firewall can based on this particular uh, different in terms of domains and area. Come up with an idea on how to set up a logical area. A, lo a trustworthy logical area as well as untrustworthy logical area. Then we can actually apply a certain security policy across this area. So this is what we call as logical area filter. Next, when we actually have the firewall act as a filter between the extra net as well as the private network, the internal network or we call it as intranet structures, will be hidden behind the firewall. Nobody from outside of network able to determine the network architecture that we have in internal. This will actually provide a security assurance to the internal user. Apart from that, firewall also come out with some uh, basic defense against some most common attack that happens nowadays. So whenever there is an attack going through the firewall, firewall can proactively defend against the attack by applying some policy. Example, determines the attack based on the IP or based on the uh, patterns, and then apply actions such as blacklist or even dropping the packets. Now we are going to see the classifications of firewall. Firewalls are classified into the following three types. First of all, the traditional packet filtering firewall. Next, the uh, application or proxy firewalls, as well as the stateful inspection firewall. Let's see the first packet filtering firewall. Packet filtering firewall is an effort of uh, checking the packet one by one. When we talk about packet filtering firewall, you can see that in every packet, we shall actually have our IP header as well as our TCP header. So in this case, only the packet headers are going to be checked. And this is using uh, ACL access controllers together in order for us to filter data packets. 
So when we are going to use the SCL access control list to view the data backend, basically the parameter that we can filter is actually based on the source and destination IP, source and destination port, as well as protocol. However, with this packet filtering firewall, we have issue to actually check the uh, internal payload of the packet. Since the ACL is used to do a matching, any sort of payload that is carried by the packet is unknown. Therefore, we are not able to associate with our data packet. Next, packet filtering firewall also unable to adopt to multi-channel protocol. Examples such as FTP file transfer protocol. FTP file transfer protocol is using uh, two different channels, where the first channel is to establish the TCP connections, and another channel is for the data channel. So if let's say the TCP protocol channel is enabled by the SS list, well, any subsequent data protocol traffic that travel under the data channel will be allowed as well. This will actually make the uh, firewall itself unable to identify the payloads, whether it brings any harm to the network. So therefore, this is also something has to do with our uh, data, whereby packet filtering firewall only uh, effective on the packet level. Next, we see the proxy firewall. Now, proxy firewall is actually uh, what we call as the application firewall as well. Now, in this prox uh, proxy firewall, you can actually see that the proxy firewall itself serves as the uh, middle device, okay, the intermediate device between our PC, which could serve as uh, one of the uh, trusted domain. Okay, to the internal intranet server. So every time when there is uh, traffic going across between the PC and the server, they has to actually go through the firewall. So proxy means that the uh, inter uh, intermediate person or intermediate device in this case between the uh, communication. Now. With this is what we have over here. We actually can uh, check the data packets as well as the payload that it carries. However, the disadvantage of this proxy firewall is that it actually will have the issue of slow processing. As this is highly dependent to the uh, implementations of the uh, software that we have, as well as uh, resources of the firewall. So therefore, this proxy firewall is actually quite vulnerable to attacks, examples such as DOS attack, the denial of service. Apart from that, the application layer proxy firewall also need to uh, specially design for every different kinds of protocol. So when we actually design this particular uh, proxy uh, firewall, we might actually take quite some time. And therefore, you, we actually need to allocate a special resource in order for us to use this particular proxy firewall. Hence, if let's say there is any sort of uh, incoming new protocol or technologies, we will have a difficulty to upgrade our firewall in the short time. Next, we have our stateful inspections firewall. Now, stateful inspection firewall is actually uh, an extension of our packet filtering firewall that you see just now. Now, the firewall itself is actually uh, not only performing packet filtering, but also based on the connection status. So, each of the packet that pass through the firewall are going to be treated as an independent unit and any sort of uh, historical associations of his historical association of packets as will be considered as well. Now over here, what you can see is that let's say the host 
is trying to actually establish uh, TCP connections to the server. Maybe the server itself is performing uh, accessing the web server or even uh, accessing the file server. Now over here, in order for the host to go into the server, firstly, they must actually establish a TCP connections. So when you, when you establish a TCP connections, firstly, you are going to send a sync packet. Now this particular sync packet is actually part of our uh, stateful inspections because the firewall itself will be able to record the connection status. So when you send the sync packets, the server itself by right should give you a sync acknowledge packet. And then once you receive the sync acknowledge, the host itself should send a knowledge packet. So if let's say throughout this process, if the status is incorrect, those packets will be discarded. So our stateful inspection firewall will be able to check the connection status based on the security policy that we have configured in the firewall. All the historical information about the session will be recorded in a session table. This stateful inspection firewall is also stable to be used in TCP sessions as well as UDP sessions. Next, we are going to see the firewall networking mode. What you can see over here are two types of firewall networking modes. On our left side, we basically has the uh, layer 2 design where the firewall itself is transparent. On the right side, we actually have the uh, layer 3 design. You can see that in layer 2 design, basically firewall is transparent to both domains. Therefore, uh, in layer 2 design, firewall will not interrupt the original or existing network IP scheme in the environment. In layer 3, layer 3 is basically allow the firewall to run on a different IP network. So the firewall itself perform routing on the intranet and internet. So as a router. So in this case, the firewall will need to support some layer 3 feature example uh, like NAT, Network Address Translations, as well as UTM, Unified Threat Management. But in this layer 3 design, the network itself has to be modified from your existing environments. So regardless whichever networking modes we are going to use, regardless it is layer 2 or layer 3, uh, a careful consideration should be uh, taken during this design. 